It's been a festive week in Morgantown. It's homecoming. And Geno Smith and the Gold and Blue make their Big 12 Conference debut today against the high-scoring Baylor Bears. It's the Ford Fox College Saturday pregame. The 25th ranked Baylor Bears against 9th ranked West Virginia. The Mountaineers Big 12 Conference football debut here on Fox College Football. Great forward Jack along with Joel Klatt. So glad you Joel. They run at full throttle and the goal is very simple. Run at least 90 plays a game. Full throttle kind of like this crowd. But in order to play explosive on offense you got to have great quarterback play. West Virginia has that in Geno Smith the front runner right now for the Heisman Trophy playing with a ton of confidence second year in Dana Holgerson's offensive system and he's got the weapons on the outside to do that playing with a lot of confidence down the field for Baylor and Nick Florence they're having to replace one of the most dynamic players in college football history and last season's Heisman Trophy winner Robert Griffin the third what Nick Florence has done very well is play within himself play within the system that's a system that is very explosive dating back to last season the last seven games that they've played they've scored over 45 points so he's done a remarkable job for Baylor and expect more high scoring today between these two clubs it's homecoming in the mountains of West Virginia and for the very first time Baylor battles the gold and blue next on Fox. Big welcome back. It's an early fall afternoon in Morgantown, West Virginia. Petros Papadakis is our sideline insider. And Petros, West Virginia, they have a corral of wide receiver talent. Oh, that's right, Bowler. I mean, Geno Smith is not doing it by himself. He's got two of the best receivers, Tavon Austin. They call him Tavon Awesome. He's number one in the country in wide receiving. He is a slot guy. The other guy is a high school teammate of Geno. At Miramar High School in Florida, Stedman Bailey, a little bit more of an out -closer. Can't wait to see him. All right, Petros, we'll be checking with you throughout the afternoon. The head coaches, Dana Holgerson, second year here in Morgantown, left the Big East last year. They won the conference championship, and then they went on to beat Clemson in the Orange Bowl. His counterpart, Art Bryles, fifth season with Baylor. Bears have won nine in a row. That's the second longest winning streak in the FBS, second only to TCU. In those nine games, they've scored 30 points or more. Like I told you in the last seven, 45 points or more. Both of these offenses know how to put it in the end zone. Well, Baylor won the toss, and they chose to receive. Well, these offenses, explosive. Fifth ranked to the nation is Baylor in points scored at 51.3. West Virginia ranked number 10 at 47.3. Beautiful afternoon here in Morgantown. Both teams unbeaten, and West Virginia for the first time will play in Big 12 in the Big 12 Conference. What an environment! This place is electric right now. And we're underway. Short kick taken five yard line. Dimitri Goodson up the middle at the 30 and is hit and knocked down at the 32 yard line. Let's take a look now at today's Taco Bell impact players. For Baylor, you got to start with their quarterback, Nick Florence. Can't be easy replacing Robert Griffin third, but he's done a very steady job for them. Leads the nation in total offense with 336 yards per game on the defensive side for them. Ahmad Dixon, a very good player. West Virginia, it's all about Geno Smith, their quarterback, when they're on offense. When they're on defense, check out Carl Joseph. He's a true freshman playing safety. Baylor will try to take advantage of him early in this game. Baylor, high powered. Zalubi, 
and they start on the ground. We'll see plenty of passing in this game. And it's a hurry up. The game five. They get right to the line and let's pull the trigger again. Florence stands in that pocket over the top. Off the hands and intercepted by turnover here in Morgan. This is a terrific ball over the linebacker. See the outstretched hand? Right into the hands of the wide receiver. Maybe a little bit behind the wide receiver, but Cook right there to make the play. Opportunistic defensive play for West Virginia given the high-powered offense and Geno Smith the ball with prime field position at the 42-yard line. Right through the hands of Tevin Reese, the junior out of Temple, Texas. Now Bowie, Andrew Bowie lines up behind Geno. The Heisman hopeful, he'll pump. Now he throws out the screen. That ball is through the hands of Bowie. Geno Smith, a senior, Miami, Florida, last week against Maryland, 338 yards, three touchdowns. 68 career touchdown passes. We had a terrific chat with him yesterday, Joel. He loves to read. He's an English major, studies film, and that makes a good quarterback. Well, confident guy, very cerebral player. Second down, 10. Hey, Bryce Hager, the middle linebacker. That's the element of Dana Holgerson's offense that no one likes to pay attention to is the fact that he will stay committed to the run. They average 160 yards on the ground per game here in West Virginia. Mountaineers spread the field. Geno Smith in an empty backfield. Takes the snap. A little quick toss out. Corner. He's the inside wide receiver, but that is, that is his seventh carry of the season, and he has that breakaway ability. And here comes the changeup. West Virginia will change tempos. They'll go fast. They'll huddle up, trying to keep the defense off guard. Mountaineers spread it again. Gino, good protection. Fires a dart in the middle of the field. It's caught near the first down marker at the 36 yard line. You'll see this all day long. Gino Smith getting off of his primary wide receiver and getting to the second and third options tells me that he has complete control of this offensive system. JD Woods with his 15th catch here in week four of college football. Dana Holgerson continues to go with the hurry up. Not much. As Bowie is stacked up, he took a hit from Lackey, the Will, the weak side linebacker. Junior college transfer, Greg, from Riverside, a player that they've been pretty happy with. Stick his nose in there in the run game and has done a nice job for Baylor. Yeah, he entered school in the spring, so he got a taste of spring football ready for fall camp. West Virginia on the move after that interception. Bowie lines up behind Gino. Smith reads the defense. Now he'll tuck and run. Stutter step, cuts it inside the 35 yard line. Petros, the speed and tempo of these offenses is evident here early. Without a doubt, it is. And it's very interesting, Joel, because both these defenses are kind of used to this type of tempo. They have to play a lot of guys, but they're used to it because they see it in practice. These are two very similar offenses. So important to have great depth on your defense when you're going to play in the Big 12. Seventh play of this drive. They stretch it near side. And they hand off to Bowie. Bill Florida. Josh Wilson with the hit, number 21, comes in. He'll get some playing time today. The other safety, Mike Hicks, who backs up Chance Case. Stacked up. Good pursuit by the Bears at the 30-yard line. Lackey has been very busy here the, on this opening drive. And this is the first big down defensively of the game. Baylor with a chance to force a field goal attempt and potentially get off the field. Third and six. Look for Tavon Austin. He's in the slot. Top of your screen. West Virginia on this drive, two for two on third down conversions. They need six to keep the drive alive. Long snap count by Geno Smith. Pressure from the corner. He spins out of trouble, then is smothered down at the 34-yard line. Hager, Sam Hall came strong, and Geno Smith, Joel, not, it's not common to see him on his backside. 
Well, there was some sort of breakdown in protection there because Sam Hole, the nickel Sam linebacker, he came absolutely free at Geno Smith. Somebody blew an assignment for the Mountaineers. Benton Kurt will try the field goal. This will be from 50 yards, his career high, 48. The kick is away. No good. Sudden change defense. A huge turnover sets up West Virginia. The Baylor defense steps up and stops the high powered West Virginia offense. Back on Fox here in Morgantown, Tyler Bittenkurt. That was his longest field goal attempt ever. It's a good snap, it's a good hold. The laces are out. 50 yard attempt, and Joel, it looks good, but it just fades to his right. He's only attempted two field goals on the season. So obviously a little out of his comfort zone. It's a good kick, just didn't curl in that right post. I don't think Dana Holgerson's going to be afraid to send him back out there. It's not like he shanked that ball. That's a, that a quality kick, just a little wide right. Here's our first look at Baylor. Fifth ranked in the nation in passing with 362 yards a game. They're fifth in the nation in scoring at 51.3. Seven straight games, Joe Platt. 45 points or more. So Luby and a host of West Virginia Mountaineers cover him up at the 36 yard line. What Nick Florence is going to have to fight right now is the fact that yes he threw an interception early but as a quarterback you have to understand that wasn't your fault. He threw a quality ball and bad things can happen. So you got to come back with confidence and stay within the system. Over the top, wide open on the hands of Williams at the 25-20. And he stumbles and falls at 4-4 in the 40. But look like he stumbled up at the 15. Boy, when he caught this, I thought he was going to take it to the house. How about Florence in the face of pressure delivers a strike to Terrence Williams? Some people believe he's in the top three of wide receivers that are going to come out for the NFL next season. A pickup of 50 yards. Bouncing outside to the yard line. I don't, know, I don't know what grabbed Terrence Williams. He had a, he had a wide open look to the end zone. It, it looked like that from our vantage point, but he, he goes down and Baylor's going to have to continue to go to work here from the eight, eight yard line. Second down. Up the middle. Salubi powers his way to the one yard line. Doug Rigg. Looks like they're calling for a quarterback sneak here from the sidelines. Just line up really quickly. Get in there. Snap it. And get, well, Florence went under center. Now he takes a look as they stack it up front. The, the coaching staff's irate with the official for, for holding that snap up. They wanted to snap that ball and run a quarterback sneak. Now they're going to actually have to run a play here. So we'll be alongside Florence. Handoff, walks in, touchdown. So after the opening drive interception, Baylor comes back behind the big pass play. Florence to Williams and Salubi runs it in from one yard out. Well, you got to credit Nick Florence for stepping up right after a pick. The very next snap, he hits Terrence Williams and puts himself in position. Aaron Jones with the point after. And he's perfect now this season. 19 of 19. That's how quick Bader will strike. Salubi off the right side, pounds it in. His second touchdown of the year, up seven, Baylor. Fox College Football is sponsored by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. 7-0 Baylor. Salubi from one yard out. Five plays, Joel, 67 yards. A minute 32 off the clock. And that key play, the 50-yard strike to Williams. Well, you, you know now why they're sixth in the country in total offense. Averaging 569 yards per game. In fact, in their last nine, dating back to last year, they've won all those games. They've run for over 500 yards of total offense in every single one of those games. Five yard line. Kicks away. Drives it out of the end zone. And so a touchback in West Virginia will go back to work. This is the first time, Joel, the Mountaineers have trailed all season long. 
And Petros, this is imperative for Geno Smith to bounce back after that last series. He hasn't been hit much, and his body language was a little interesting after the last series. And, and the same thing happened last week against Maryland. He got hit a little bit, and it affected him. He got rattled, and he missed some throws. So let's see how he reacts here. You know, you're not going to win the Heisman Trophy unless you overcome some adversity, and it's early yet. Let's see how he handles it. Told us his teammates were his rock. He needs to lean on them now. First and ten for the 25 yard line play action Geno Smith with a week to throw he throws underneath and Baylor gives him a couple of yards J.D. Woods with a second catch of the afternoon you know getting back to Geno he did say the rock I've got to have something to lean on and it is his teammates but you know what he's very tough on himself Joel he wants to grade out hundred percent every week on the way that he reads defense well, and that's impossible you're never going to play the perfect game I know that's what you should strive for as a quarterback but it's never going to happen and Dana Holgerson told us they've got to create some time just for him to smile because he's so hard on himself another play attempt covered up on that pitch and catch Austin had nowhere to run he'll maybe get a half a yard up around the 27 yard line Ahmad Dixon the nickelback he plays the bear position for Baylor and he makes the stop and what West Virginia is going to realize very quickly in this game is they're not going to trick Baylor Baylor sees this offense every day in practice and they have for the last five seasons these defensive players are used to what West Virginia is trying to do. Mountaineers spread it with five wide. Third down long. They need eight. Geno Smith throws a dart. Middle of the field. Caught on the hands of J.D. Woods. And moved the chains to the 43-yard line. You know why Woods was open? Because Tavon Austin had double coverage. Watch him in the slots. Going with the All-American, leaving Woods wide open for the completion. 16-yard pickup, first down. There's that pitch out. Austin turns the corner past the 50-yard line. He'll pick up eight. And that plays into the hands now of Geno Smith, Joel, because second down and short, this guy can run a lot of different options with his offense. There's no doubt. Everything is at your disposal as a play caller. You can run play action pass. You can just bury it in a run game for the first down anything you want you can run Dana Holgerson goes with his signature diamond formation in the backfield only two wides Geno Smith wants the long ball tied up there's a flag down no question Dimitri Goodson knew he was beat and he grabbed the backside jersey and the flag came out pass interference Defense, number 22, 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. They throw that flag on Joe Williams, number 22, out of St. Louis, uh, junior. That's exactly as we said. They nice. went after a home run in the second and short. Everything's at your disposal. They dial up a double move route to their best outside receiver, Stedman Bailey. They get the call from Joe Williams, and West Virginia's in business. You know, he, fa fa he face masked him at the top of the play. Now, West Virginia, first and 10, 32 yard line of Baylor. Smith tucks and runs 25 20 and hooks slide to the 18 yard line. Man to man coverage and the blitz. There's nobody there to cover the quarterback. Geno Smith, very smart, knows that. There's not a quarterback player. Takes the open zone himself for the first down. That shows me a mature quarterback right there, understanding what's open versus every coverage available. Geno Smith averages four, over four yards a carry. He just picked up 14 and a first down. First and 10 at the 19-yard line. Smith, quick throw, near side. Breaking a tackle, Stedman Bailey inside the 10-yard line. How about the block from Tavon Austin? The bubble screen goes to the outside receiver, Bailey, but it's Tavon Austin with the block on Joe Williams, number 22, the corner, that allows that play to happen. Another quick hitter, Bailey, breaks the tackle. Works his way down inside the three yard line. Bailey last week, nice game in, against Maryland. Six receptions for 55 yards. He's got 21 touchdowns in his career here at West Virginia. 
And the Mountaineers are knocking on the door, down by seven. Second down goal. Bowie, a yard to the one. Knocked down by number 11, that's Terrence Lloyd. Third down, goal. Gooey. Touchdown! Cody Clay got the key block and Bowie ran in untouched. Watch Clay block him on Dixon number six. Great call, Craig. The key block, kicking out the defensive end, allowing the big hole. Touchdown, West Virginia. Extra point. Bitten Kurt up and good. 20 of 21 on point after attempts. We're tied at seven. Celebration in Morgantown, Baylor, and West Virginia. Morgantown, West Virginia. See, this town lives for one thing, Mountaineer football. What an awesome place to be the last couple of days. I'd like to come back in a couple of weeks because you know what's going to happen. We've got the crowd in all gold. <laughs> Just come to the Mountaineer game. 25 yards. They've waited a long time for this new conference oh. as well. You know, the debut in the Big 12. This is a big deal here. And homecoming on top of it. And the kicks away, a little short. Seven all, Baylor underneath it, Dimitri Goodson pops through it. A hole quickly closes at the 31 yard line. The flag is down. That's uh, Troy Gloucester. Number 49 for West Virginia lost his helmet and pursued the play. This is a personal foul. Kicking team, number 49. 15-yard penalty, first down. New rule in college football. We'll talk about it right now. Let's get a game break. Back to Los Angeles, and here's Patrick. Greg, thanks very much. Sun Belt. Look at Logan Kilgore to Anthony Amos, one-handed. Back of the end zone. Go ahead, call him. Famous Amos after that catch. We're tied at seven. Craig, Joel, and Petros. All right. Georgia Tech trying to bounce back. They lost in overtime last week to Miami. So, I wonder if, I wonder if Eddie and Joey are going to put mark that down as a catch of the day. It might be. It might be. Beautiful back line reception. Now, once that hat comes off, you've got to stay out of the play. If not, personal foul, and the officials are right on it. Baylor runs the football. A one-yard pickup. There's 49 Gloucester, and you see he didn't even really pursue. Don't get mad at the officials. They're just enforcing yes. what the rules committee have given them to enforce. That is a bad rule in college football. Hopefully next year they correct it. Florence throws. Near sideline, Terrence Williams, who had that 50-yard reception on the last drive. The marking just short to over the first down at the 46-yard line. Three wide receivers set. Near side. Florence settles under center. Hand off up the gut. Salubi. That's such an important play, Craig. The first first down of the series. And Petros, both offenses trying to go fast. As you know, that rhythm starts with the first first down. It's a slippery slope all the way to the end zone, but you have to get it started positively. If you don't, you're going to go three and out. Shotgun, Florence. Finds a seam and on the money. And he grabs another, his third of the afternoon. He's got that breakaway speed, as I mentioned. He's been clocked under 4-5. And Baylor goes back to work. Florence rides his back and he throws far side. Daryl Stoneham with his first reception. I love the distribution. It doesn't matter what number you wear. The name on to catch the ball from Nick Florence. Four or five so far, over 80 yards on the day. 81 with that early interception on the ground. Salubi, the senior, muscles his way inside the 15-yard line. This is a well-oiled machine. The offensive lineman 
do a terrific job of getting set right away to snap the football. Now Nick Florence under center. Salubi again barely caught his breath. He hits a pile of Mountaineers led by Isaiah Bruce who plugged that hole. You know, Joe, I tell you, in this offense, both these sides, on both sides of the ball, you've got to be a tremendous football shape. Absolutely, because it comes down to this. Late in the drive, third and four, the crucial down of the series. Clock rolls up on three minutes to play, first quarter, and a 7 all tie, third down and four. It'll be another carry up the middle. Not much of a wiggle room, but he finds enough. Their guards, they love their center, Ivory Wade, the left guard. They go right behind those big guys for the third down conversion. Florence, the handoff, Glasgow Martin, touchdown Baylor. Baylor doing it with the run game. Martin gets hit all the way at the three-yard line. Wow, what an athletic play to get that ball across the end zone. First carry of the afternoon is 38th of the season. He's the up back, and he just came in to give Salubi a breather, and he scores his fourth touchdown of the season. The extra point up and good. Jones now 20 of 20 on PATs, and Baylor on the road up seven. Fox College football is sponsored by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. And in part by Taco Bell. Sometimes you have to live Moss. And by some Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 with S Pen. Note the new way. 14-7 Baylor. You know, they have straight touchdowns and Lead by seven, nine plays, 54 yards, capped off by the Glasgow Martin seven yard scamper. Jones, the kickoff, takes a bounce inside the tent, tough to handle. Bailey tripped up as he nearly broke it outside at the 12-yard line. Let's get a game break. Come back to Los Angeles. Patrick O'Neill. Craig, thanks a lot. SEC AM host in Arkansas. Johnny Manziel dancing all kinds of time. Look at this. Little jump. No. Fake throw to Mike Evans. Four yards. Arkansas has lost three straight. Last time they've dropped four in a row, 2004. Craig, Joel, and Petros. Thank you, Patrick. Some pressure on head coach John L. Smith down at Arkansas. Well, and, and clearly, uh, the, the loss to Louisiana Monroe, they, they get shut out against Alabama. The, the, not a lot happening in a positive fashion for, for Arkansas ever since the offseason, you know, really. And as he was calling for the press conference. Smile! Yeah, interesting. <laughs> as we went to Packard back in L.A., a late flag picked up. It was offside, so let's do it again. We'll march it back five to the 30. And Geno Smith is biting to get back on the field. They're down seven. First quarters where they dominate. In fact, they mount score their opponent 48. Short hopper. This one gets pitched back. Tavon Austin. Room 40. Beautiful tackle. Bailey gave him a nice block, but a shoestring tackle. Special teams by Baylor. But West Virginia, great field position to start this drive at the 40 yard line. Let's introduce the UPS Team Performance Index, a new statistical measure that looks at the efficiency of a team's offense vantage. Check out the UPS Team Performance Index throughout the season for a bit on top of that most of the season. LSU and company, here we go. West Virginia back on the offensive attack, down by seven. Geno Smith shotgun stands, fires up over the top. It's caught. J.D. Woods looks like he climbed up a ladder on that third rung and made the grab at the 47-yard line to pick up a 13. West Virginia hurries up. Beautiful pass in traffic. 
Tavon Austin. How did Geno Smith thread that needle? For the defender to get in there and bat that ball away. So a 13-yard strike, followed by a 19-yard pickup. Mountaineers moving the football. They go to the ground, stacked up the pads. You can hear them popping as Bowie took a couple of hits, and they'll mark him at the 25-yard line. Take a look at this last pass and threading the needle up high to Woods. Twice now on the series, it's been Geno Smith from the pocket making an accurate throw down the middle of the field to set them up with this great field position. Up the middle, Bowie and block to let Bowie rumble into the uh, second level inside the 10-yard line. Got a Baylor player down at the 10-yard line, and Petro... They're taking cornerback, one of the best players on the Baylor defense, Dimitri Goodson, into the locker room. It's his arm, guys, and it really doesn't look good. They're putting an air cast on him, and he does appear to be in a lot of pain. We'll get an update on Dimitri Goodson, but right now for him, it doesn't look good, and this Baylor secondary needs all the help it can get with Geno Smith's assault on them right now through the air. Well, Goodson walks into the locker room, a senior out of Spring, Texas. Josh Wilson, the nickelback number 21. But losing Goodson in the locker room, that's a huge problem. Now, he's a guy who started at point guard at Gonzaga for a couple of years, missed football, came back, sat out last year at Baylor, and he has started for them at the cornerback position. But he's played very well for them. They were singing his praises yesterday when we talked with the coaching staff, so they will miss Dimitri Goodson in the secondary. Now, his brother Mike, running back, started the season on the roster with the Oakland Raiders. High snap, they hand it off, cut it back inside. Stedman Bailey works his way to the seven yard line. The pace with which these offenses are playing, this is difficult. They're making this look far too easy. Five wide receiver spent, set, empty backfield pressure, a top oh! on the hands. What a catch by Woods, but a flag is out. Baylor came hard off the corner with Blitzers. I don't know how Geno Smith got that ball away, but the catch by Woods was superb. Woods a star in his own right for this West Virginia team, and this is the penalty flag, roughing the passer on Baylor. They call that against Eddie Lackey. Touchdown's gonna stand. Geno Smith stands in the face of pressure and delivers a strike for a touchdown. Extra point, little chip shot up and good. We promise high scoring. Two, three, now we here. <laughs> Two, three, now, baby. 14 we all. See, we all we got. Baylor and West Virginia on this homecoming afternoon here in Morgantown. We're tied up at 14 apiece. I tell you, it was rocking the last two days. This stadium, I don't know, it's full capacity. The whole town was rocking. What a great environment. They love their college football here in Morgantown. 52 and 10 home record in the last 10 years and 20 of the last 23. Petros, the environment here is fantastic. Never seen anything like it. It's wild up here in the mountains. <laughs> All the coonskin caps, I love it. A penalty, of course, was marked off on the kick. And Fox College football kicks off later today. 12th ranked Texas taking on Oklahoma State. Tell us what you think and vote on the college football social poll of the week. Joel, who's the most explosive offense in college football? Florida State, O State, Oregon, West Virginia. You may have to throw Baylor in this mix. Can, can Baylor be in there? Well, if, I, if I'm choosing, I'll still have to say Oregon. You know, they've just proven it year after year. But my goodness, what we're seeing here today, these offenses are prolific. Log on to Facebook to cast your vote. Florence, after that interception, has not missed a throw. How about five for five now? 
He was four for four for 81 yards coming into that series, but he had the pick early. But since that interception, he's five for five. Zalubi, close to a first down, 35 yard line. Philip Montgomery, the play caller for Baylor, he seems very comfortable with the run game right now. And Petros, they're doing a nice job winning up front with their offensive line. And you talked about the strength of the center and the guards, Joel, but the tackles are inexperienced. A freshman and a sophomore, they're doing a great job running the ball, kind of neutralizing the pass rush. Flags. Full start. Offense number 58. Five yard penalty. First down. You know what? And the way and the, the play. Yeah, they are very disciplined and they execute extremely well. Right now, don't be surprised to see one of those quick slants. Baylor's missing a player. He's going to have to run him out here from the sidelines. It's going to take an end to the quarter. And the clock will run dry. What a first quarter it's been in Morgantown. Offense. Welcome to Fox College Football, presented by Geico. Geno Smith, always ready. Do these guys ever stop? No, I don't think so. You know, that's how you run, the hurry-up offense. Well, we told you he was a perfectionist. Never wants to stop. In that opening 15 minutes, combined offense, 280 yards, 28 points between Baylor and West Virginia. Florence stands, now rolls out of the pocket, chased. Stutter steps, oh, he took his shot in the numbers inside the 30-yard line. Petros, a lot of offense, a lot of hard hitting, some injuries piling up, too, in that opening quarter. Unbelievable pace right now, and guys, you talk about both these quarterbacks. They really just want to sit back there and distribute to all these wonderful athletes you see around them. Joel, you hit on that theme earlier. This is the Big 12 Conference. Florence rides his back now, throws it far side, and it's out of bounds off. Terrence Williams could not bring it down inbounds. And Josh this, Francis, the buck. This is one of those opportunities. You sense it from the crowd. It's third and 11. It's a tie game, and it's an extremely important down. They've got to get off the field here. Boy, rare substitution for that West Virginia defense. Baylor two for two on third down tries. The West Virginia defensive coordinator. Now this crowd is alive. And throws it high. Ball on the hands of Sampson. Move the chains to the 40-yard line. Lanier Sampson with the reception. And a first down for Baylor. What a throw from Nick Florence. Touch pass all the way, far sidelines, converts it for Baylor. 26-yard pickup, Glasgow Martin is off the right side. And Petros, I understand Jared Salubi also has been shaken up. They've already lost one of their five defensive backs in Dimitri Goodson. Salubi's a senior, guys. He's been running the ball very well in this game. But he came off with the shoulder. They're checking him out right now. Second down after a pickup of five. A quick hitter near side. Levi Norwood. Joe, I can't imagine trying to, why you wouldn't want to play for Baylor. If you're a wide receiver, an inside receiver, a slot back, a running back, you know you're going to get the football. How about this? Terrence Garvin blitzing, hits Nick Florence in the back late, draws the personal foul, roughing the passer. Now Baylor's going to be down inside the 15-yard line. That's not a smart play from Terrence Garvin. Sometimes the offenses go so fast, the defensive players get frustrated that they can't make a play. And when the First and 10 inside the 15-yard line. Martin lowers his shoulders, and Will Clark makes the initial hit, number 98, for the Mountaineers. A pickup of two, second down long. Clark stands 6'7, goes 271, out of Pittsburgh. Martin again, met at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a half a yard, Isaiah Bruce and company. Put the hit on Martin. 
If Salubi can't come back, Joel Martin's going to have to take a load in that backfield. And another huge down. Third down for West Virginia. Just forcing the opposition to attempt a field goal is a defensive success for them. They've got the chance right here. Blitz. Florence taken down. That brings up fourth down. Terrence Garvin, who was just whistled for that late hit, came strong and put the pressure on Nick Florence. Three straight plays, they ran the exact same pressure concept. It's a zone pressure, the Sam and outside linebacker to the wide side of the field, blitzing, the line slanting, Baylor trying to get outside the pocket. The only hard part with that outside blitzer, Craig, it's very difficult to get outside that contained player. A great call by defensive coordinator Joe DeForest from West Virginia. Aaron Jones, a 33-yard attempt, and the kick is up and no good. Jones misses from 33. Greater Morgantown, West Virginia means more fun, more adventure, and more memories than you could ever imagine. It's a place where spectacular scenery and the fun of a university town matters, biking along pristine trails, strolling and shopping, and enjoying awesome tastes and flavors. Whether it's for a weekend or a lifetime, Greater Morgantown is the place to be. Find out more by visiting tourmorgantown.com. Oh, the emotions of Big 12 football, Baylor on the road. 25th ranked West Virginia, number nine in the country, making their Big 12 Conference football debut and its homecoming. We're tied at 14 early in the second quarter here in Morgantown. Baylor says one thing, welcome to Big 12. Geno Smith, the pitch, Austin can't find the edge. Stutter steps. And he'll get back to the line of scrimmage at the 20-yard line. Surrounded by a host of Baylor Bears. A little touch pass. It's like a basketball play. To pursuing the ball is paramount when you got a fast, quick twitch guy like Tavon Austin. Baylor does a nice job on that last play. Geno Smith. Shotgun whistles will stop play. Before the snap. False start. Offense number 57. Five yard penalty. Second down. That's Richie Smith, our referee today. Flags on Jeff Braun, the right guard senior. To this front line of West Virginia. He goes 316. Joe Madsen, the senior, 305. Josh Jenkins, the left guard, 303. They can move a mountain. 11 minutes to play in the half. Smith in the pocket, comfortable throw. It's short underneath. Only a pickup of three on the hands of Austin. I like they got half of that back. You know, second and 15, you come in, get about an eight yard completion to your slot guy in here. He's probably going to get double teamed, which might leave this wide receiver wide open. Five wide receivers. Smith, the long snap count. Sets his feet, throws short, off his hands, incomplete. And Baylor, a little press coverage, Joel, and that would have been short of the first down. Ivan McC... Baylor gets off the field. Geno Smith trying to complete that ball into the short side of the field. That's a difficult proposition because there's just less space. When you work to the wide side where your three wide receivers are, you have more space and opportunities to throw that ball in the vulnerabilities of the defense. Corey Smith will punt inside his own 10 yard line. Finds his seam, 50, watch out, 40. Norwood, 30, Norwood inside the 25 yard line. <laughs> 45 yard punt, 45 yard return and setting up that high-powered offense inside the 25-yard line. Baylor 
with the ball at the 23 yard line tie game 14 14. Today's game is sponsored by the 2013 Buick Buick. A lot of push ups. <laughs> Morgan Town. I say he better pace himself. The Mountaineer better pace himself today. 14 all. 10 03 to play here in quarter number two. Great return. Sets up Baylor first and 10 at the 23 yard line. Florence in the gun. Tevin Reese, the, the motion man. Florence in traffic, nearly had it intercepted down inside the five. Reese was the intended receiver, but good pressure up front by West Virginia. And this is why Nick Florence had to get rid of the ball before he wanted to. He could feel that pressure coming from the middle of the pocket. That was George Wright that came in, a senior from Miami, and applied the pressure to Nick Florence. Second down, 10. Lake Seastrom in the backfield. He'll get the carry. Tries to cut it back. You know what? That was a great fake by the quarterback on option. He took that ball right out of the belly of Seastrom on a keeper, and he picks up maybe two. That brings up third down. The fact that they don't have Jared Saluby in the game has really hurt them because their run game was really helping them on first and second down. Now another third and long. You got third and six for Baylor. Florence runs up as they try to audible out of this play. I tell you, the play clock's running out. Down to three, just got the snap away. Florence stands, throws, far side, pitch and catch, caught. Williams, and he's out of bounds inside the five yard line at the two. Pat Miller, the corner on the top of your screen or the top of the formation gave way too much cushion for third and six. Didn't understand where the sticks were, and that's where Terrence Williams stops, gives his chest to the quarterback, Nick Florence, easy conversion. Martin, touchdown, Baylor. Glasgow Martin, second touchdown run in this first half from seven and now from two yards out. Look at him find the hole low near the ground. Gets over the goal line. Baylor, their third touchdown of the day, second for Martin. Aaron Jones with the point after. He's been busy three for three. When we come back from break, the Fox College Saturday studio will have a preview of the Pizza Hut halftime report. Stay tuned. Patrick O'Neill here, Eddie George, and Joey Harrington will join me on the Pizza Hut halftime. Big Ten Conference play began today. Both Minnesota and Northwestern are looking to stay perfect. Plus, Arkansas reeling from three consecutive losses. Can they break their losing streak against Texas A&M? That's next on the Pizza Hut halftime. All right, thank you, Patrick. We'll stay tuned. Nine minutes away from back in Los Angeles. 21-14 here, Baylor. Four plays, just 23 yards, a minute three off the clock. And Joe Klatt, Norwood's 45-yard punt return just gave the Bears just terrific field position on that drive. Yeah, that shot in the arm that they needed after not getting points on their previous series. Aaron Jones, line drive kick, takes a wicked hop. Right around the six-yard line, and Tavon Austin smartly lets just that ball fly away. Series stop that jet sweep to Tavon Austin. If they can do that, as well as run to the outside and stop those bubble screens on first down, they're going to be in good shape. It's about taking away what's on the perimeter, and a first down play for West Virginia, because Sean Alston, their big back, is not playing, is really those perimeter plays. They're kind of like in place of a run game. Baylor's done a good job of pursuing and getting over there and stopping it. If they do that, they're looking good defensively. Bowie lines up behind Geno Smith. Play out. Brings it down. And that's Dustin Garrison, number 29, with a nice pickup. Let's go back to Los Angeles. A game break. Here's Patrick. All right, Craig, taking into the college station. Arkansas, Texas A&M, Razorbacks. Remember, they have lost three in a row. But Tyler Wilson and Niall Davis down the sideline for the touchdown. It's 10-10. Back to you. All right, thank you, Patrick. Here it's 21-14. Big first down run by Garrison as he rumbles up to the 37-yard line. There's that first down, and now watch the Regino Smith. 
Gets the play to the offensive line. And here they go. From the gun. Looks one way, throws near his side. Did he have a foot down? Yes, at the 47. J.D. Woods, what a half he's had. Senior out of Naples, Florida. Just such a good job by Geno Smith. Watch him looking left and flips all the way to the right side of the formation and then delivers the ball. Get a foot down for the completion. Complete command of the offense for Geno Smith. Second down short. Fly it out to Austin. He'll dance for the first down. Spins out of a tackle. Pass midfield to the 48 yard line. Well, what an explosive player. Averages 115 yards. 11 receptions a game. He's the special teams player of the year last year in the Big East Conference, and you see why so shifty and quick in spin. Garrison lines up behind Geno Smith. Run, run, run. He'll get the carry. Right up the middle, he goes for maybe a yard. Nick Johnson, number 76, a defensive tackle with the tackle. That's his second on this series is a Juco transfer from Navarro College. He's the one who pursued on that screen earlier in the series. He's done a good job already today. Keeping under control the West Virginia run game which after the first couple of series has hit a bit of a wall in Nick Johnson. No gain on that play second down 10 Smith in the pocket goes middle field up top. Seven yards as Geno's. And then just one of the most accurate deep passers in the game gets it right on the chest of Stedman Bailey. Geno Smith showing why he's a Heisman frontrunner. Dana Holgerson is very upset. There was a personal foul on Stedman Bailey for spiking that football after he crossed the, the goal line. Dana Holgerson's upset because he knows how important field position is in a game in which both offenses are going to go up and down the field. But the execution going back before the spike, what a tremendous deep throw by Geno Smith. Then Kurt, the extra point. And that ties the game up at 21 all. What a ball game. Bailey over the shoulder catch. And the celebration. Oh, what a game in Morgantown on Fox. Fox College Football is sponsored by Reese's, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter. And in part by Victory Motorcycles, ride one and you'll own one. And by Pizza Hut, make it great. Play a shootout in Morgantown, 21 all, Baylor, West Virginia. Tino Smith, 18 of 20 for 172 yards and two touchdowns. That's, lady, ladies and gentlemen, why he's the Heisman yeah. front runner. Well, that's his 20th career game now with two or more touchdown throws. Came in to 81% completion percentage. He, he's been fantastic today. Has yet to throw an interception through nearly three and a half, well, three games and a half. Kick at the 14 yard line. Goodly tripped up. And Baylor will start near their own 30 yard line. Make sure you stay tuned. Pizza Hut halftime report just around the corner. As Patrick mentioned, Big Ten conference play opens up. They'll cover that. Joey and Eddie. And also the story I'm going to watch is can the Razorbacks and John L. Smith, can they break that three game losing streak? It'll be tough. College Station is a tough place to play. And they're not playing well. You know, there's not a lot of positivity around that Razorback program right now. Back to work goes Baylor, 21 all tie in Morgantown. Glasgow Martin alongside Nick Florence will get the call. He'll push the pile past the 35. Now Florence is a game manager, Joel. Eight of 11, not quite the numbers that Geno's put up, but yeah, how but about that? He's been the, fantastic. Yes, you know he, he's been tremendous in this game. Remember he had the pick early. And then he's been nearly perfect since. There's the pump. He's got man coverage up top on the run. Tevin Reese breaks the tackle. Touchdown. 
65 yards. Carl Joseph had Reese around the ankles, and Reese ran right out of it. The wheel route from the slot coming out to the outside. And how about the speed of Tevin Reese? Baylor answers West Virginia with a strike of their own. And it's a touchdown for Tevin Reese. I mean, are you kidding me with this? These guys are awesome. Sixty five yards makes it a twenty eight twenty one ball game Baylor. Tevin Reese broke that tackle and you can understand now why Baylor Joel is fifth in the nation in passing yards and number five in the nation in scoring fifty one points a game. They're at twenty eight with six minutes and change left in this opening half. The execution on offense today has been mind blowing. Both of these offense, both of these quarterbacks, both of the play callers. Let's just say I don't envy the defenses in this ball game. My goodness. Long kick, two yards deep. Here comes Austin. Makes a beautiful run, a dangerous run. He took it out of the end zone, two yards deep, and rumbles up to the 42. Let's take a look back at that touchdown. Watch the defense get out of position. It's going to be a wheel route from the inside receiver. That's who the defender is supposed to cover. He's late getting there. The safety goes with the post route at the 50 yard line and bang off to the races. Tevin Reese ends up into the end zone. Nice strike by Nick Florence. It's easy to overthrow that ball when he's that open. You got the look that you want to see to so credit the quarterback for stepping through and delivering that ball accurately. West Virginia down seven will start this draw. Austin flies across the middle of the field and right on target is Geno Smith. These two quarterbacks are amazing and and you're talking about big yardage on every per, snap this is per play now every snap it's unheard of 8.3 yards per play seven yards per play fresh down to the 45 of Baylor quick hitter far side on the hands of Bailey he steps out of bounds at the 39 yard line Sam Hall safety with the tackle out of Katy Texas. Catch your breath second down and five. Make it four. Big hole. Big yards, 28 yard line. You know, both coaches told us they wanted to reestablish and work on their ground game. So far, critical times, we've been able to see a couple of nice runs to try to reestablish the ground. That's what makes it so hard on the defense. You can't just spread yourself out to stop the high powered outside offense. You also have to stay sound in on the interior. Quick throw near side, JD Woods. Morton. Petros, that's why I think the safety position is so important nowadays in college football because they've got to be run defenders and great in the pass game as well. And they can't over pursue when they come outside to these hitch plays and bubble screen. For West Virginia, Bowie lines up alongside Geno Smith. Smith, protection, breaks down, throws it to the end zone, touchdown! Escaping the pocket to the right, Stedman Bailey does exactly the right thing and continued execution for the touchdown. And now the extra point. Extra point is up and good. Bailey, what a day. A touchdown in the first part of this quarter for 47. He catches this one from 40, and we're tied at 28. Watch Geno Smith just buy enough time as the protection was breaking down. He buys time to the right. Find Stedman Bailey. Touchdown, Mountaineers. 4.54 to play. Now you have to just see it to believe it here. I mean, this crowd's worn out. 
They got plenty left in the tank, I guarantee you. <laughs> right. Not even halftime. And we're tied at 28 apiece. We saw already now two different adjustments. Pressure West Virginia started bringing some pressure, and immediately the offenses counteract that with the bubble screens, the run game to the opposite side of the pressure. The cat and mouse game that continues to go on. This is the Big 12 Conference. This is what it's all about. It's not about total yards and scoring defense. It's about just getting those stops when they arise, and neither defense has done a great job of that. Goodly tries to take it up the middle. He's met head on at the 25 yard line. You take a look at Baylor's offense. It started today with Nick Florence. He's been absolutely tremendous. 9 of 12, 209 yards, the touchdown, the one interception. That was a tip ball. It wasn't a bad throw. On the rushing side of things, this is what they need to get back to. It's been Jared Salubi, but he's left the game. He doesn't have his helmet on the bench right now. On the receiving side for Baylor, it's all about Terrence Williams. Five catches, 98 yards. This crowd revs back up. Baylor back to work at the 29-yard line. Seastrunk tackled for no gain and flying through Carl Joseph, the true freshman, the free safety with a beautiful stop. In fact, Joe DeForest, the defensive coordinator. He's an athletic guy, and you saw it, a tackle in space. That's why they love him so much here. One concern today, you've got to be able to play your lane, and you have to do open field, have open field tackling. Florence across the field. Caught by Terrence Williams and a first down Baylor at the 48 yard line. That's a matchup that they're going to have to exploit. Pat Miller's given a lot of cushion to Terrence Williams every single snap. And Baylor, even if it's to the far side, like on the last snap, they have got to exploit that in order to move the ball and gain first downs. Five wide receivers set. Baylor again spreads the field. Florence in an empty backfield, and he is taken down as the Mountaineers come heavy on the rush. Doug Rigg with the tackle. He had the big play last week against Maryland, rumbled in from 51 with that fumble recovery, and Rigg has been active in this first half. And he's normally a will linebacker, so they are rotating pass rushers. He's down there with his hand in the ground on the last play, trying to get as many fresh bodies as they can to get after the quarterback. A loss of five, second down, 15. Florence. Up top and a flag. There was a bump. Now multiple flags are out. Reese going one on one with the freshman Carl Joseph. Carl Joseph. Pass interference. Defense number eight. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Just lost his balance. That's what made him reach out and have to grab. At Tevin Reese. Pretty clear call there for the officials, but I thought Baylor got fortunate. Nick Florence was under some pressure and threw that ball up a little bit. And just the stumble from the true freshman is what led to that penalty. Last time Baylor was on the field, Tevin Reese was the big playmaker with 65 yards from Florence to make it 28 21, and then West Virginia comes right back. Fresh downs for Baylor after the flag at the 42 yard line of West Virginia. Hot slant down low, incomplete at the 35. They ran a linebacker out of there late, right underneath the slant lane for Nick Florence. I thought that that was very confusing for him. That was Isaiah Bruce, the linebacker. Another throw on the way, far side, through the hands of Sampson. And a hard hit, Pat Miller, you could hear those pads pop. And I think Sampson may have heard the footsteps. Ball was a little high, and it stops the clock. 3.14 to play, third down 10. Garvin 
off the edge. Florence was asking for a face mask before he ever even went down to the turf. But West Virginia with the biggest defensive play so far for them of the day besides the first interception get off the field and give their offense a chance now winding down two minutes and 30 seconds here in the half. And a timeout call by West Virginia. On Tuesday, ride along for an explosive new installment of Sons of Anarchy. That starts at 10. Then Friday, when tempers start flaring, there's only one way to settle the score. Catch the ultimate fighter at 10 o'clock on FX. So we got the ultimate fight here. <laughs> With 234 to play, 28 28. This is considered defensive anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. Spencer Roth at his own 35 yard line will punt away. Tavon Austin. Straight up. <laughs> well, here's what's happened for West Virginia and Geno Smith. Two yards and three touchdowns. You mentioned those numbers are front runners for the Heisman. Well, and he's got another series, so they will tack on to that. Then Bowie as a rushing leader. He's done a nice job. Nine for 42, over four and a half per carry, and the touchdown. And then on the outside, it's Stedman Bailey, who's been a heck of a target. Six catches, 91 yards, already the two touchdown grabs. West Virginia now with another opportunity with 227 left. Bailey now with 23 career touchdown receptions for West Virginia. Mountaineers go back to work. Bowie to the 17 yard line. And the clock runs now up on nearly two minutes left in this wild first half. Timeouts if needed. Baylor with three. West Virginia two. Over the middle. Wide open. Austin. Makes a cut, near side, 50-45, and is right out of bounds at the 38-yard line of Baylor. Another blown coverage for Baylor. Austin, just an easy underneath route, and he was wide open. Geno Smith again by some time, backs up in the pocket, and then you see... 45-yard pickup. Now the keeper, Geno Smith, smartly gets down on the grass, the turf at the 31. Petros, he's just making great decisions. I mean, he hasn't made a bad decision, maybe one all day. It's amazing. And this offense, I mean, both of these guys, it's exactly how these offensive mad scientists, Art Bryles and Dana Holderson, would draw it up. Mike Leach is smiling somewhere. <laughs> Now both coached with Leach. That's why they found this offense close. That was In fact, they'll give him a first down. Yes, Quinton Spain, the left tackle. Nice seal block. In 2000, 2001, 2002, Dana stayed there for quite a while while Art got the job at Houston. Chip high on the hands of J.D. <laughs> I'd appreciate that catch from J.D. Woods. Yeah, there's no doubt. There are times during a game wide receiver, and you just ask your wide receivers hey a couple of different times you're going to need to bail me out and these guys do it for Geno Smith that's the only way you can throw for over 80 percent you got to be confident in all that yes you got to be accurate but you also have to have wide receivers that will step up and make tough catches Geno Smith on the day 24 or 26 for 273 lots of great decisions including using his feet to hurt the Baylor defense they broke down in coverage a couple of times speaking of Baylor and Geno Smith, aware of what's going on on the field, took advantage of those breakdowns. This was one of them, the second touchdown for Stedman Bailey. And how about Geno Smith? Most career TD passes for the active quarterbacks. Landry Jones, who seems like he's played for eight years. Matt Barkley, same deal. And Geno Smith on that list. 71 touchdown passes in his career. What a phenomenal athlete and quarterback to be able to watch. 15 this season. 
for Geno Smith looking for more. Pedals back over the middle. Nice catch at the five yard line. Jordan Thompson. True freshman, Katy, Texas. If you're open, Geno Smith will find you, and he's going to hit you in the chest. First and goal from the five. 50 ticks. Now it's running on that first half clock here in Morgantown. Baylor shows blitz. Here they come. Cut back inside the five. Still on his feet. He is Bowie to the two. Baylor calls timeout with 29 seconds remaining. Well, it's the Dr. Pepper tuition up to $100,000 in tuition. Is the Dr. Pepper tuition giveaway. 33 seconds to go in this wild, wide open Big 12 battle. It's the Big 12 debut for West Virginia. And it may, this one's going to be remembered. Yeah, and, and looking forward here on this second down, this is when it pays dividends to have an experienced quarterback like Geno Smith because the defense is going to have to clarify what they want to stop. And it's all about ratios, Craig. And if they've got the ratios in the run box saying, we're not going to let you hand the ball off and score a touchdown, then you have to call a play that Geno Smith is allowed to check out of. Give the keys to the car to Geno Smith in this situation. Allow him to audible if he needs to. Bowie and Clay in the backfield with Geno Smith. Quick throw, got man coverage up top. Touchdown, Bailey! <laughs> 11 consecutive completions for Geno Smith. He hit 14 in a row earlier in this game, and this offensive show continues. They're nothing to say. You cannot throw a fade better. Geno Smith, the eighth time in his career now, four touchdown throws, and we're not even through the first half. Extra point, good. Bailey now with three touchdowns in this first half, 24 in his career, and that moves him past Cedric Thomas for most career touchdown catches in West Virginia history. Well, he better watch out. His teammate is only two behind him. Tavon Austin is right behind him. They're going to be in the end zone. He's the prototype for the outside receiver. He's not very tall, Stedman Bailey. He's 5'10", but they say his wingspan is somewhere around 6'2", 6'3" which is perfect for that outside receiver. Big hands and Petros, when you got a guy outside like Bailey and inside like Austin, it's perfect for Geno Smith. He can use the entire field. Yeah, both these guys very confident and they really do play with a lot of chemistry. Let me run this one by you, Joel. Geno Smith throws a masterful deep ball. I have it star, the wow. greatest deep ball thrower of all time. I'm, I'm applauding up here. I don't know if you can hear that. A Jeff Blake reference, that's tremendous. Grade on his percent on completion. What would that be in this first half? He wanted 100%. He's he's near it. Stoneham with a return to, to the 35-yard line. What a game here in Morgantown. How about tonight? Could be, should be another great matchup. 12th-ranked Texas looks to stay unbeaten when they head down to Stillwater. 12 opener. All right, so Texas is giving up only 16 points a game. Oklahoma State, well, they're scoring much more than that. Upwards of 55, 60 points a game, 686 yards of total offense. What's well, going to give down in Austin? Baylor down seven. Florence, delay. Seastrunk could not. That's what you call staying at home. Now the clock under 10. That could be the final play of this wild first half. Florence breaks out of the pocket. Little pitch out. Sampson. Oh my! Touchdown! Oh, 
This place was rocking. They thought Florence was down and then just threw it on the run. And that ball travels to the end zone with Lanier Sampson. What's the fastest way to quiet down 60,000 people? I think Nick Florence just showed us. We're going to look at this, though, because the question was beyond the line of scrimmage. James is a replay official, and he's looking at exactly what you are at home. This was very close. Oh. Based on our blue line, I, I think initial look, that one may come back. He talked to the football initially and wanted to run. Yes. Here's a wide look from up top. 33. The, the blue line, you cannot pass and then throw. Splits it and then oh, was he above it? That, that's going to be tough. It looked like his right foot was on the 33-yard line. Now Reggie Smith's on the headsets with David Ames, our replay official. There's his right foot, which is basically right on the 33-yard line. My goodness. Here's, here's what it comes down to. The ruling on the field is a touchdown. I, I don't know if there's enough to overturn it. Indisputable video evidence. I, I, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's there. If it stands it's a 67 yard touchdown the clock is dry here after one half of football. And, and what a huge play because West Virginia is going to get the ball. To start the second half. It's a long look. They want to see this look. The officials just asked to look at this one more time, and here it is. The plant, the foot. Joel, I tell you, if you go I back, it's, it's right on it's the on line. It. Now, again, the blue line that we have on your television screen is not official. It, it's, it helps. It's a marker, but it's not an official for them to overturn. Just like if they were to have ruled that he was across, I don't know if they could overturn it the other way. Every further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. So Florence had the foot planted, 33-yard line, the blue marker. You make a great point. It's not official, but it's just a line of reference. And the replay crew, led by David Ames, confirm it's a touchdown, 67 yards. And the PAT will tie this game at 35. Unbelievable. Picks up and good. 70 point half between Baylor and West Virginia. It's halftime in Morgantown. We take you back now for the Pizza Hut halftime report. And here's Patrick. Wow. Wow. A shootout in Morgantown. Are you kidding me? It's amazing. Just amazing football. Tied at 35. We're going to go all through yes. this game, this first half that we saw. Uh, plenty more coming up, of course. Big Ten Conference play opening up. Uh, Minnesota and Northwestern trying to stay perfect. Can the Razorbacks break their three-game losing streak against the Aggies? That's next on the Pizza Hut Halftime. Wild first half here in Morgantown. Homecoming for West Virginia. Craig Buller, Jack, Joel Klatt. We'll talk to Petros here in just a moment. But, Joel, we, we promise exciting. I didn't promise this. 70 points of <laughs> offense 
uh, 86 total plays between these two teams and nearly 600 yards of passing offense. 711 yards of total offense. Uh, it's been quite a show here. Right now in the game has completed 12 straights. That was a school record. So he's getting there to uh, break his own school record in the same game. As we get to the Geico halftime stats here, this is a game right now that is really turning on one possession or another. A huge call late in the half. Nick Florence there to end the half. Five touchdowns apiece. 18 first downs for West Virginia, but my goodness, both teams, Craig, over eight yards per play. Florence threw for 298 yards. Couple of touchdowns. Geno Smith, 288 with four touchdowns. He has not thrown an interception in 146 attempts. Petros, I know you caught your breath at halftime. <laughs> not very easy. Needless to say, guys, we're watching the most explosive game in 2012 so far in the college season. And Dana Holgerson's upset because his offense had to punt once. It's amazing. <laughs> and he also said he likes the way they're playing on offense, of course. But defensively, he says they know what Baylor's doing. But stopping it, that is the biggest challenge. West Virginia has the football to start this third quarter. Geno Smith back to work. That ball is not Wilson, who was shaken up a bit in the first half of play for Baylor. So a rare incompletion for Geno Smith in this football game. Second down, 10, shotgun. Smith, quick flip, far side. And upended is J.D. Woods at the 30-yard line. They were big. 26 to 28 for Geno Smith, 288, and four touchdowns. Andrew Bowie was carrying the ball over 50 yards. He's on his way to a 100-yard game on the ground. And Stedman Bailey already with three touchdown catches set the West Virginia record today for career touchdown catches. He's got 24. Third down. Bailey having a terrific afternoon as he cut down the middle. A little slice and dice by the Mountaineers at the 42-yard line. Three wide receivers set up to the near side. Bowie, big hole, cuts it back to the 49. Joel, as you know, again, I, I refer to you as the old quarterback. You're not that old, but on that first down, you get eight or nine yards. That second down play is a free one. Yeah, absolutely. This is where you get the double pass right now from West Virginia. Second down two for Geno Smith. Crowd just settling back in after a while first half. There's a spin off a tackle and back to the line of scrimmage. Ahmad Dixon with the tackle. They had so much success. And Stedman Bailey, Stedman Bailey. Surprise, they went to the ground on that play. That brings up third and short now with Bowie and Clay in the backfield. Bowie down 45 yard line. Josh Jenkins, the left guard, with a nice block up front to pop him. Bowie's been, been impressive. He's not a big back, Joel, by any means. He's 5'9, about 188 but he's shifty, he uses that body well, it can slide through traffic. You can tell just by the sound, it's a physical game down there when they start handing the football off. Baylor's still bringing some wood from the defensive perspective. Fresh downs, first and 10 of the 45. Go, go, Baylor's go. pressure off the edge. There's a tackle broken, Austin Sia, 10-5, touchdown! Tavon Austin! Joel, these are just not little five and six yard dinks. All afternoon, Baylor and West Virginia have uh, traded big play after big play. This one goes 45 yards. You saw the blitz from both outside edges and no middle safety. Cover zero, man to man, no help deep. That's a player that's quick enough to stay with him. Well, the only thing that hasn't gone right for West Virginia, what's this? The little touchdown leap. 42-35, <laughs> Mountaineers.
Fox College Football is sponsored by Assurance and in part by DirecTV. Now NFL Sunday ticket is included at no extra charge when you switch. And by Nissan, innovation that excites. Now talk about excite, excitement in Morgantown. 42-35, seven plays on this opening drive in the second half, 75 yards goes West Virginia in less than two and a half minutes. I mean, what do you tell your defense? It's not like these are huge blown cover. You know, I mean, they're just they're just getting beat. That's that's a demoralizing. That's a demoralizing thing from a coordinator's perspective because there's not beating your defense. Another kick is away. A little fumble and a knee at the five inside the five. Let's get a game break. Busy day, Patrick. All right, thanks a lot. Georgia Tech having trouble with the Blue Raiders from Middle Tennessee State. Benny Bam, Bam, Cunningham, 23-yard touchdown run. Cunningham, 141. Nothing like what you guys got going on over there in Morgantown. Back to you. All right, thank you, Patrick. I love that run. Bam, Bam is right. Here is just a track meet, 42-35. And Baylor, can they answer? They have all afternoon. They go back to work down by seven. Salubi, who was absent in the second quarter, is back. And there's Geno Smith. He is pumping this hometown crowd up. He wants them up on homecoming. Batted. And complete. Petros, it feels like West Virginia's defense has got some energy right now. This is the time to get a third down stop if you're the Mountaineers. Well, the bell's ringing, but I don't know if they're going to answer it. Nick Florence has just been brilliant today. That ball was knocked down by the 6-7 Will Clark. Baylor, four of six on third down conversions. They need six yards to move the chains. Crowd is alive. Florence steps, throws, got a man, first down. Yes, it did. West Virginia recovers the fumble. Tyler Anderson, hometown product from Morgantown. Terrence Williams wins and finds his own. And when he comes down with it, that's pretty close. I don't know if he made a football move. This possibly is going to be reviewed. And I think it should be. He comes down and gets hit right away. And they are going to review this. You know, the rule is simple. You have to make a football move. Did he? He turns and immediately the ball comes out. Beautiful tackle. Darwin Cook, head up, helmet on the number. It also popped that ball out. Yeah, form tackle. This is exactly how you coach it. Maybe the head up just a little bit more, but down low, exactly what they want in college football, away from the head. But as far as the ruling goes, I got to say, this is going to come back. I, Terrence Williams didn't have an opportunity to protect himself or make a football move. I got a feeling that this one's going to go the other direction. Replay official David Ames, second time we've gone upstairs for a review. By the way, I, I talked with David during halftime about the play right before the half. Nick Florence, was he across the line of scrimmage? Was he not? And he said, Joel, I just didn't have enough to overturn it. That's why that play stood. This one, I, I feel like there's more, more evidence there. Petros, you were standing right there. It looked like he got hit immediately when he came down to the ground. Yeah, I think he was turning around, though, Joel. I think he did make a lot of things. Looks to me like he caught it, but it's very close. The question I have, Petros, is was that move directional, or, or was he just continuing to spin off of coming down? Well, now you're just confusing me. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it really did. It really did turn out to be a bang bang play but it really did seem as if he had possession long enough to make it a fumble. I think they're having the same problem upstairs honestly to break this part uh, this play apart. The official Reggie Smith still on the headset. You know the, the longer it goes the more you think it's not going to get overturned you know Petros because then they're looking for you know is it overturnable is there indisputable evidence 
I, I, I still think it's going to come back. It's now whether or not it comes back. It, it's very interesting whether or not it comes back. It's still a stop for West Virginia which is huge in this football game. That's a great point and it might just be the length of this review to, to spot the ball because they've already moved the chains and, and switched the chains for West Virginia so they've got to get the spot of where the football is what's going on with the down and distance marker so that Baylor can go out and punt the football Petra so a, a lot of logistics going on. Pretty yeah, close the clock ruling on the field catch and fumble. And here's the announcement long awaited. After further review, the pass is incomplete. It'll be fourth down and seven from the 28 yard line. Petros, you make an interesting point. Well, the game. So they're going to give him two seconds back, but Petros, again, it is. It's, it is a win. No matter they didn't get the fumble, they still get the stop and a punt now for Baylor. And those are at a premium from Baylor to start the game and a West Virginia punt. Uh, and we saw the two missed field goals, which I guess you could say Petros is a defensive win. Absolutely in this game. <laughs> but you were right, Joel. You had me. It was all in the direction. Well, I got the benefit of the replay here. It's like <laughs> cheating up here. Spencer Roth will punt inside his own 15-yard line. Averages 47 yards a kick on the season. Gets off a of beauty. Austin so dangerous takes a step out of bounds at the 15 yard line and here comes Gino the Heisman front runner 42 35 Mountaineers Fox College football presented by Geico Some clouds dark clouds moving overhead here at Milan Pushkar Stadium sold out on a homecoming weekend here in Morgantown they'll talk about this one for Many, many moons. 11.55 to play, third quarter. 42 35, West Virginia. There's that little pitch and catch. Austin can't turn the corner. Geno Smith took that snap and gave it immediately to Tavon Austin. Petros defending that play uh -oh. is, is so important. Tavon Austin is, is the one coming up lame there. Interesting. They're looking at the back of his left ankle. And those are really interesting plays. Really scary because the ball comes to Geno Smith and then he just kind of almost just pushes it into the arms of Austin or Bailey as they're coming around on a jet sweep. It's dangerous looking. Petros, you're you're down there. They're looking at his ankle, correct? Yeah, and they're looking at his calf. They're they're. It looks like they're rubbing on his calf right now, which is actually not a bad sign. To stop that play, you have to have great perimeter defense. It is considered a pass play, which, as a, I got to tell you, as a former quarterback, I love. I mean, you talk about padding the stats, right? But. Petros the the onus becomes the in man on the line of scrimmage if he gets reach blocked or his outside shoulder becomes blocked that that play is off to the races yeah. so you know that player has to be strong on the outside that time it was Sam Hole the nickel safety was on the outside he did a terrific job forcing that play back into the interior you, you really do have to set the edge but these guys Bryce Hager and Ahmad Dixon that are really selling out to get to the perimeter they have to look out because Austin could cut back under well, a sigh of relief as Austin was able to get off the field under his own power. Smith out of the pocket, throws underneath. Dustin Garrison is piled under at the 22-yard line. Garrison coming off a knee injury last year. He was a top rusher, don't forget, for West Virginia, Joel. He ran for nearly 800 yards last year and six touchdowns, but slowly coming back from, from the knee. Garrison, the motion man, on third down. Smith in the pocket, fires a dart. That was caught just past the first down marker, but J.D. Woods took a shot and a helmet pops off, and he'll have to come out of the game for a play. But look at the awareness from Woods. I want you to see the small area that the zone separates. 
and Wood sits down in it. That's perfect execution from the wide receiver. That's again how you complete so many passes as a quarterback is when you got wide receivers that understand what's going on for the defensive look. First down, 28 yard line. Quick throw near side. Bailey, he's so tough in the open field, spins his way to the 50 yard line. This is exactly what Baylor was concerned with to open the game, but it has only reared its ugly head late in the first half and now in the second half. Missed tackles in the open field. Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator, telling it tired. At midfield, load up the backfield. Jordan Thompson will get the call, and he's dropped for a two yard loss by Hager, the middle linebacker. How about this shake and bake on Joe Williams? Stedman Bailey, Tavon Austin. They are fantastic players. And by the way, Tavon Austin back on the field. Yeah, that was a roar from the crowd you heard as Tavon returns to the field. Quick throw. That ball just right through the hands of Tavon. That falls incomplete. Third down. Crucial play right now for Baylor. Third and 12. It's still a one possession game. You have to find a pass rush on Geno Smith. He's been able to sit back in the pocket and just pick them apart. 33 of 37. Six touchdowns is the school record. He's got five right now. Mark Bolger, who had a tremendous career here, went under the pros with six in a game. Geno sets his feet. Patient. Touchdown, West Virginia. This is why you've got to create a pass rush. If you give Geno Smith too much time and the offensive line does a great job of protecting, he's going to find a win in the back half. Tavon Austin was matched up with middle linebacker Bryce Hager, and that was far too long for Bryce Hager to have to cover one of the most explosive wide receivers in all of college football. Tyler Bittenkirk with the extra point. What an afternoon for Tavon Austin. Tavon Austin, 12 receptions, 204 yards, two touchdowns. He came in averaging 11 receptions a game. That's number one in the nation. And Geno Smith with a six touchdown pass. He ties Mark Bolger for the school record. About seven plays, 80. I don't know if anybody can pull that Heisman away from Geno Smith after today. At least not in September. Stoneham at the two. Well, the big mo momentum is definitely in the back pocket of West Virginia. I want you to look at these safeties. Because of the formation, the two wide receivers are focused on the outside. That leaves the middle linebacker one-on-one -on -one with Tavon Austin. At that point, it's all about protection. And as you see the middle linebacker get lost in space, too much time as the protection holds up, and that's going to be a win every single time for West Virginia. Too fast, too explosive. A great job by Dana Holgerson designing a formation that takes advantage of a specific player for Baylor. Baylor wants to quiet this crowd. And they go back just to some simple football. Pitch and catch outside to Terrence Williams. Sure-handed receiver as Geno Smith strolls the sideline. How about this? He has more touchdown throws today than incompletions. That's... That's amazing football. First down to the 29-yard line. Let's get a quick game break. Break back to Los Angeles, and here's Patrick. UCF hosting Missouri. Marcus Murphy going to bust a punt return for 66 yards. He has three punt returns on the season. This game, 14-10, Mizzou. Your game, 14-10, when it started. All right, thank you, Patrick. Of course, Missouri making the jump. 
into the SEC world. Leaving one of those spots for West Virginia yes. here in the Big 12. Some pressure starting to get to Nick Florence. West Virginia's defense starting to play much better late in the first half against Baylor. They're starting to play on that momentum that their offense has created with all the big plays. Second down, Florence flushed. Throws, incomplete. Turning on that ball was Tevin Reese. He had him. He was wide open. Made that cut right here's, when the ball was thrown. Here's the difference. The protection broke down for Baylor where it didn't break down for West Virginia. So the wide open receiver deep down the field, Nick Florence can't get to him, whereas Geno, Geno Smith has been able to get to him all day long. Florence now checks to the sideline. They audible with five on the play clock to three to two. Just got it away. Reese races inside the 35 yard line and Florence comes up with a big play to move the chains. Right down the middle of the field. The safety's nowhere to be found. Tevin Reese right in stride. Nice comeback throw from Nick Florence. 39 yard pickup. Fresh downs. Salubi. Petros, you'd have to say it's imperative that they score a touchdown on this drive. It's gotten to that point, even though we're in the third quarter. Well, we've gotten to that point in the second quarter of this game. <laughs> I mean, you better score touchdowns or you're not going to hang in there. And I have been impressed with Baylor's young tackles, Troy Baker and Spencer Drango. They've done a pretty good job protecting in this game. Clock rolling up on eight minutes to play in the third. In traffic, that was a dangerous throw by his fingertips and falls incomplete. I get the sense that Baylor and Nick Florence is starting to feel the pressure, not just of the pass rush, but of the entirety of the day that they have to score, that they have to be perfect to keep up with Geno Smith. And they're running, they're not running this offense as quickly as they did in the first half. They're checking to the sideline much more here in quarter number three. Five on the play clock. Got it off with a second to pair. Spare. There was pressure from the backside. Joel Platt, that forced an early throw, and it brings up fourth down. That's a blown assignment by Terrence Williams. He had man to man coverage, and you got to understand when you've got no back, so somebody is manned up and has to side adjust as a wide receiver. Terrence Williams didn't do that. Nick Florence was expecting him to, and West Virginia forces a field goal kick from Baylor. Aaron Jones will try a field goal. They'll mark it at the 36. This will be a 46-yard attempt. His longest this season, 44. No. Joel had the distance, but pushed it to the right. Virginia celebrates and again as we talked to both coordinators you get a stop or a missed field goal You're gonna celebrate a lot in a ball game like this. There's no doubt and you get the sense Whether it's the crowd the momentum everything about this game. It's about to turn completely for West Virginia If they can come up with a touchdown on this drive It's gonna be incredibly difficult for Baylor to overcome that type of a deficit Bowie, the ball carrier, picks up three yards. That last offensive series for Baylor. Now you've got to talk about this defensive series for the for the Baylor Bears. As you mentioned, to stop the momentum of West Virginia. Second down. Reverse it. Here comes J.D. Woods with some running room. Stutter step, first down. It takes a pile of Baylor Bears with them to the 48-yard line. So J.D. Woods picks up 16 and a first down and an injured Baylor Bear down at the 40. We'll step aside here on Fox. 
Fox College Football is sponsored by Dr. Pepper. Tell the world what makes you one of a kind with the I am a hashtag on Twitter. Well, that is a good sign. Ahmad Dixon. He plays the nickel back, the bear position. And he went up and close your eyes. He takes a shot right on the chin by his own teammate, and the lights just went out. Yeah, that was KJ Mort Morton who was coming. Trying to pursue from the inside of the formation. That pursuit just caught up and, and got to Dixon. After the timeout, he shook it off and was able to get off the field. Now first and ten. Mountaineers want to try to run some clock maybe as they run the ball maybe a yard to the 49-yard line. Bowie came in averaging over five yards a carry. Geno Smith on the play action goes up top over the shoulder catch Stedman Bailey again burns at Baylor secondary you cannot throw the deep ball any better than Geno Smith has thrown it today right on the outside shoulder drops it perfectly for Stedman Bailey 47 this yards is an absolute clinic Craig I tell you what Geno Smith is playing amazing football first and goal inside the five yard line across inside the one Tavon Austin it's Stedman Bailey have been a lethal combination today with Geno Smith Cody Clay in the backfield alongside Geno Smith In a pile, Bowie stopped and dropped. No gain. Good hit as Hager and Terrence Lloyd teamed up to make the hit. Third down and goal. Bowie. Got the all-out blitz from Baylor, but Bowie is able to go up and over the top. Coming down right on the goal line for the touchdown. Impressive drive from West Virginia, highlighted by the beautiful deep ball from Geno Smith down the left sidelines to Stedman Bailey. Extra point. Kick is up and good. A dominating third quarter. It was 35 35 at the half. A 21 point run by West Virginia. Five sixteen to play in the third quarter. College football here on Fox. How about Geno Smith? He has now tossed a school record 486 yards. It breaks his own record that he set a year ago, but the numbers 36 of 40, six touchdowns. So a record of passing yards in a game and ties the record or breaks the record now or ties it with Mark Bolger pardon me with six touchdown throws in a ball game. Goal line. Stoneham. Hopkins skips not once but twice and multiple flags on the field. Looks like confetti. Every official Joel emptied the pockets. I, 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 I think I've just had not to seen show that. off their arm. That, that's why. <laughs> if uh, well, you're going to throw one, I'm going to throw one deep too. Trying to keep up with Gino. We'll get the call. A very busy Reggie Smith. There are two fouls on the play, both against the return team. Holding. Receiving team number 23 is declined. Block in the back. Receiving team number 19. At the distance to the goal. First down. 
Go, let's look at this week's Heisman watch presented by percent 18 touchdown passes and no interceptions. Petros, I, I don't I know we had to put two other guys on there, so I went with Colin Klein and AJ McCarron, but right now it's all about Geno Smith. It is in September, it belongs to Geno, and I don't want to blaspheme here in Morgantown, guys, but is he more popular than Major Harris? Whoa, whoa, Petros. I know. Major Harris. Baylor down 21. Starts at their own five yard line and they'll go with the ground game. Glasgow Martin puts his head in the pile and he'll push it to about the 10 yard line. You know, and we do say the right phrase there. It is about September because he's playing great now, but as we all know, it's about what, what happens in November in those big games. And that's when the Heisman Trophy is won. Florence near side. Williams works the sideline and is tossed. Now there's a flag. You don't need that type of football to be played. You're up 21, and then you toss your opponent out right in front of the, the side judge. That was Pat Miller, the left cornerback, senior from Birmingham. You see that glare right there that uh, Holgerson gave him? The head Joe coach. DeForest, the deep play was over. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number six for the unnecessary throwdown. 15 yard penalty. First down. The last thing that you want to do, and this is why the coaches are so upset as we take another look at the play, is, is give Baylor that jump start offensively to the best of them. Martin, three yards to the, I think Nick Florence, Philip Montgomery, who's the offensive coordinator for the Bears, just trying to reestablish, Joel, I think, some confidence. And then try maybe for the big the big play. Down 21. Long ball contact. No flag comes out. Both fighting for the ball. Carl Joseph, the freshman, up against Tevin Reese. He's the first true freshman to start a safety here for the Mountaineers since 2008. Here's that hand fighting that was going on. See how he turns back to the ball? If he just plays the player, Tevin Reese, he might get a flag call, but a, a nice play from Carl Joseph to turn around towards the ball. Doesn't draw the penalty flag, forces a third and six. Not as confident as this Baylor offense as they were in the first half. Florence checked again on the sideline. Hot slant. Williams breaks a tackle and a first down at the West Virginia 48-yard line. Terrence Williams has been the go to guy on third down. Comes through huge with a conversion there. Now they go hurry up. Quick throw, far side. That ball incomplete. Lanier Sampson took a hard hit. The Buck, Josh. Game had a 33 game reception streak, third longest in the country. Got two today, so that moved to 34. Second down and 10. Lawrence throws and they'll toss it to the West Virginia sideline. Let's get a game break. Back to Los Angeles and here's Patrick. All right, Craig, thanks a lot. Miami Hurricanes looking to extend their lead on NC State. The true freshman, Duke Johnson, into the end zone. Starting the fourth quarter, Miami up on NC State, 30 to 21. Craig, Joel, and Petros. Thank you, Patrick. It was a day Miami a powerhouse in college football are they trying to creep back in big third down here comes here comes some sort of pressure it looks like Florence steps in the pocket throws finds a target far side of the field Levi Norwood and a big conversion they needed 10 they got 12 Watch the patience from Florence because initially the coverage is good and then right at timing from Baylor in order to convert a third and ten. Clock under four minutes here in the third. Florence deep ball. Man coverage up top. Touchdown Baylor. Terrence Williams. They use that body. He's 6-2. Witten got it over the back of Broderick Jenkins. 
This is what 6 2 will do for you. Athletic play from Terrence Williams. Good throw from Nick Florence. But that whole drive was started by the personal foul from West Virginia earlier in the series. That's what got the whole momentum going for the Baylor Bears. Extra point. Up and good. Baylor strikes back. They trim it to 14 on Fox. Baylor strikes back to West Virginia, but they hadn't done anything in this second half until Pat Miller threw down for this play, the touchdown strike to Terrence Williams. Nick Florence, you got to give him a lot of credit. He's bounced back very well after facing some pressure, going down big, all the momentum sitting with West Virginia, and Baylor strikes back. They needed that big time. Career highs today, 10 catches, 188 yards for Terrence Williams. A touchdown covered 37 yards. And Baylor with a big bounce back touchdown. They've cut the lead down to 14, 56 42. Just over three minutes to play. Third quarter. The kick from the 35. And nearly out of the end zone. Well, this is what a school record looks like with six touchdown passes early in the game. Woods in the back of the end zone and then the deep ball. I mean, he's been throwing it accurately all day long. Bailey found himself wide open a couple of times. This was a beautiful fade route inside the five with great touch. Tavon Austin helps his Heisman candidate friend out with a nice run. Another long throw to Tavon Austin. Six touchdown passes later. Geno Smith has tied the school record with Mark Bolger. 486 yards passing and not even through three quarters of football. West Virginia up by 14 will start this drive on for a couple of yards. I mean, those are just, I mean, gaudy numbers. 486, six touchdowns. Mark Bolger and Geno Smith now own and that school record of six passes than incompletions. That's crazy. That is craziness. Geno Smith just playing amazing football. Second down, seven. There's show Blitz. Smith play action. Fires all oh, great defense. Out in front of the football, knocking that pass down. Joe Williams, number 22. He was a JUCO transfer from Fort Scott. And he's going to have to start taking some chance. There might be some double moves out there for West Virginia, but if you're big, you've got to find stops. No longer is it at your disposal to sit back and then rally up to the tackle. They got to start making plays. West Virginia spreads the field five wide. Bears again showing the blitz. Here they come up the middle. Geno Smith throws underneath, pitch and catch. Bailey, he is taken down after maybe three yards to the 32 yard line. And again, that philosophy playing forward with Phil Bennett. He blitzes on third down for one of the first times today, forcing Geno Smith to throw the ball hot to a side adjust route and then rallying up and making the tackle. I love that adjustment from Phil Bennett trying to get the ball out of Geno Smith's hand. Remember the last third down they had Geno Smith sat in the pocket for about 10 seconds and found Stedman Bailey deep inside the five yard line. That ball is out. It touched. It ricocheted off a couple of players inside the 30 or the 40 yard line. And it's recovered by Baylor. That was only the fourth punt of this game. Two by each team. And this one kind of makes you hold your breath. Yeah, that's not what you want to see. Definitely touches. The Baylor player, but they're lucky that they were right there in, in order to recover that football. That came off Chance Casey. Looked to be number nine down there. So Baylor back on the offense, down two touchdowns at the 37 yard line. And what a huge stop for their defense now. Now their offense, who's in rhythm, this whole game seems to have changed on that personal foul penalty last series. Pressure from the edge. They get a little block. They seal it. Here comes Reese. And he picks up about seven, maybe eight yards to the 45-yard line. And Petros, that's why coaches get so upset with those penalties. It gives the other team momentum. Yeah, and Baylor will take it. I mean, they are very, very sound offensively. They push the pile for a first down to the 48. Let's get a game break again. Busy day around college football. Here's Patrick. Craig, a party at College Station, AM all over Arkansas. Nile Davis coughing it up. 
picked up by Tremaine Jacobs, 27 yards for the touchdown, 37 unanswered for the Aggies. Patrick, that will be an interesting press conference for John L. Smith come early in the week, or even tonight, pardon me, in postgame. Baylor moving the football now as we creep up on a minute to play in the third. Baylor seems to be kind of getting a little swagger back, Joel, as they move the football a little quicker now, as we saw in the first half. Up the middle, big hole, Glasgow Martin. Again, another first down. Just a huge possession in this game. Baylor has a chance to cut this down to a one possession game. And they're moving the football. Florence. And Joel, that again is a quarterback who needed help, and Williams came back to give him give him a little. Yeah, Terrence Williams has done a great job of that all day long, finding the open spots in order for Nick Florence to find him open. He's done a terrific job. Play action, tough throw, far side on a sliding catch. Pulled in by Lanier Sampson. Yeah, they're clearly in rhythm right now. The play calling, Nick Florence, and the pass protection. When you play this fast, there's no way that the pass rush of the opponent can be fresh. And that's another way to protect your passer, Nick Florence. Six and seven yards, a clip. Middle of the heart of that defensive front for West Virginia. Martin crashes into the 15-yard line. I was wondering, the clock does run dry here in the third. 15 minutes to go in a shootout in Morgantown, 56-42, Mountaineers. Welcome to Fox College Football, presented by Geico. Back in Morgantown, homecoming. Also, the Mountaineers, Big 12. Conference football debut. What a debut it's been. Look at the scoring. It was all tied up at 35 at the half. An explosion by the Mountaineers in quarter number three. A bounce back touchdown by Baylor. And they're on the move again here with 15 minutes to play. Critical series. Baylor has to score a touchdown here to keep pace with West Virginia. They finally got off the field as a defense. And got some confidence. They're resting on the sidelines as a defense. But the offense has to convert this third down. Up the middle, spinning out of one tackle, he got it. Glasgow Martin and Petros, Nick Florence doing a superb job himself, not being overshadowed, or at least trying not to be overshadowed by Gino. My goodness, guys, I mean, almost 450 yards for Nick Florence throwing the ball, and he is what his coaches described him to be, stable and strong. So Luby was bounced down to the turf hard at the two-yard line. That's a great point, Petros. He is stable. He's coming in for RG3, and he's done a heck of a job. And he's done a heck of a job today. Back to the ground. So Luby tried to sneak in. He's short. Now, don't forget, RG3, guys, Heisman winner, 4,200 passing yards a year ago, 37 touchdowns. He ran for 10 more. And Florence has taken it all in stride. He's under center, keeper. Waiting, touchdown! A delayed call to the official at the goal line. Touchdown, Florence. That is a character drive from Nick Florence and the Baylor Bears. This game was all but sewn up. Three touchdown game. Baylor hadn't stopped West Virginia at all, and really still hasn't. But in order to get down there and get within one score, what a drive from Nick Florence. Joel West Virginia, three unanswered touchdowns, and now two unanswered by Baylor. And the chip shot for the extra point is good, and all of a sudden it's a seven-point ball game in Morgantown. 56-49 on Fox. Fox College Football is sponsored by the new 2013 Ford F-150 with EcoBoost. And in part by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. 
and by Miller Lite. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. A little rest will do you good in a game like this. The fatigue factor is going to play a part in this game. With just over 14 minutes left, Nick Florence and Baylor coming coming back, storming back, really. I mean, right back into this bowl game. You know, you have to tip a hat to Florence. Yeah. I mean, the RG3 talk of last year, he was the face of college football. You know what? Florence says, look, I learned from a great player. I, I, I flourish under learning from him. And look what he's produced today. Thompson tackled back at the 13-yard line. Joel, a lot of numbers. How about the Ford game summary? Well, don't you have to start with Geno Smith? And yes, you do. 490 pass yards, six touchdowns. But Nick Florence has been equally good on the opposite side. 448 passing yards and the three touchdowns. By the way, Nick Florence also ran for one. Both teams combined 14 touchdowns on 23 possessions. There hasn't been a lot of stops in this game. But the quarterbacks have been tremendous. Geno Smith now comes out. This is the formation that has given Baylor a lot of problems. An empty set. Two wide receivers to your top. Oh. Up top, wide open. Oh, my. Busted coverage. Bailey up the run. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown. <laughs> No one took him right off the line of scrimmage. He's one of the most productive players in the country. The identification for the defense was nowhere to be found. I would rather leave anybody else on the field wide open rather than Stedman Bailey. Art Bryles has got to be very disappointed with his defense right now. Bailey, school record. 260 receiving yards on 11 receptions. Four touchdowns for Bailey. 63-49, Mountaineers. In Morgantown, 63-49, Mountaineers. He's not going all the way back no. up. Those, those, those are, are short hats. arms. Petros, you got to get down there and show him how to do the real push. You got to go all the way up, not just the half push-ups. I told the Mountaineer he looks like a T-Rex doing those push-ups. <laughs> That's not okay. <laughs> Total offense in this game, 1,286 yards. And still just under 14 minutes to go. West Virginia with a kick, it's away. At the two-yard line is Goodley, 20, 25, room at the 30. Flags are down at the 35-yard line. That one came from the backside. During the return, holding, receiving team number 15, 10-yard penalty, first down. Let's go back to that touchdown. Here's Tavon Austin. Here's Stedman Bailey. I want you to watch the safety. Austin, this is what a great player does to you. His eyes stay on the inside, never gets to the outside, and the wheel route is wide open. Another blown coverage from Baylor. And Stedman Bailey goes the distance. How about these numbers? 13 catches for Austin, 12 catches for Bailey. Bailey's gone for 264 and four touches. These guys as a tandem, best tandem in the country, hands down. Six combined touchdowns. And now another test for Baylor to try to answer back. They go to the ground with Salubi. He'll push the pile up near the 20, call it the 18-yard line. It'll be second down and call it six. Florence stands up in that pocket, flushed out. On the run, head to the sideline, stiff arms, and then dances out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Great awareness, Joel, of where the sticks are. First down by a yard. And where the line of scrimmage is, too, because it, it looked like he wanted to stand up late and throw that ball, but he realized he was across the line of scrimmage, tucks it down, finds the first down marker, and gets it with his feet. Fresh downs at the 25.
Levi Norwood, the motion man. Florence calls for the ball. Low snap. Stands and throws. Oh, a pick nearly. Tyler Anderson nearly had that interception. This is one of the first bad decisions that he's made all day. Tyler Anderson was under that route the entire time. They run a pick concept on defense, and the linebacker, he didn't even look in the backfield. He just ran underneath the number one wide receiver. Florence almost threw it right to him. Salubi alongside Florence. Second down. On the hands of Lanier Sampson. And the bell chimes. Third down here in Morgantown. Yard and a half. Low snap. Salubi. Just enough past the 35. Petros, it seems like they need to get back to Terrence Williams. He's got that soft coverage at the top of the formation right now. And Nick Florence can get it to him, but his passes have become shorter and shorter as the game has gotten longer. Florence under pressure, threw it up high, and it's incomplete. Tevin Reese was the intended receiver, and Florence gets a hand up. Doug Rigg, the outside linebacker, he's going to want be the one putting pressure on Florence, just bang right in the chest as Florence released that football. That's why the ball was high. He couldn't really come over that throw and finish it. Second down. Quick throw, Reese spins out of a tackle, reaches forward, looks to have a first down at the 46-yard line. The pressure that both of these offenses put on defenders to tackle in the open field is immense. And Carl Joseph, the true freshman, gets just enough to get him down to the ground. The only hard part, he still got the first down. Florence back to work. Home run ball up top. There's contact. Flags are down and a catch at the 10-yard line. Terrence Williams, the go-to guy, makes the reception, but flags are down as both receiver and defender battle for possession. Defense, number five. Penalties decline, result of the play. First down. Jersey got caught up there. That's number six, Pat Miller. Been in the middle of a lot of action. Proper thing and continues to run. That's how you get the jersey to be stretched away from the body, and it becomes obvious for the officials. So a smart play by wide receiver Terrence Williams. Injured player down to the 21-yard line. That's an injured Baylor Bear. Very physical game. Yes, high scoring, but these defenses have been putting the hit on this entire game. Petros, the, the conditioning on both sides is astounding. They are up and down the field all day long. 1,300 yards total today by the two teams. Terrence Williams does not seem to be a guy that gets tired. And then you look at the other side of the ball, Tavon Austin, unbelievable. Two and a half hours out here at a very high level, and they just don't seem to get tired. I mean, anybody else would be in an ice bath. This is, this is unreal offense we're seeing here, guys. A lot of time left. Hit the 12 minute mark. Baylor trying to knock on that door once again. They try the middle of West Virginia. Salubi stop. No gain. With a little play action fake to a guy like Salubi and then trying to run those hook routes behind the linebackers, but no back in the backfield. Here for Nick Florence. Second down. Quick throw. Salubi. Reaches out past the 10. They'll knock him down to the seven yard line. Carl Joseph, again, the true freshman, 197 pounds, two time Orlando Sentinel player of the year. You can tell why. He's a terrific player for West Virginia. Came in He'll with be a great player for a long time. Oh, yes. Here. He came in with 18 tackles and a, one sack. As I mentioned, Joe DeForce. Very high, as the coordinator told us, this kid has a very high football IQ. 
quick throw up top. Touchdown, Baylor. Antoine Goodley picks up his first touchdown. Terrence Williams and Florence finds him in the end zone. Extra point. Do when you throw the ball this well and this perfectly, the defense has got no shot. Well, in order to win the Heisman, it's not just about what you do on the field. It's a leadership role you play with the stands pumped up and then the execution during the game. It's a big reason why West Virginia has put up 63 points, but it continues. Baylor hanging tough, 63-56. We still got 10 minutes left. <laughs> How about nearly 11? He's still got more touchdown passes than incompletions. This is blowing my mind. I, he's thrown it 43 times. He's got five incompletions, seven touchdown passes. And 577 yards. That's not right. You're not supposed to do that. You can't even, quarterbacks don't even dream of a game like that the night before a game. That's, it's like, wow, that's, that's just a dream. This is better than a dream. You know, Joel, you made a great point. It, it's what you do in November, five yards deep. This game, and Petros, this game could be the defining moment for Geno Smith and holding the Heisman in New York in December. It really could be. It is one that they'll point to, but he's got to continue to put up numbers. But guys, this is one of the most explosive and high scoring games between two ranked teams ever. I mean, Baylor's 24th, West Virginia's seventh. They're both undefeated. This isn't one powerhouse versus a one and three team. I mean, we're really seeing something special here this afternoon in Morgantown. Great point, both undefeated. West Virginia number nine, Baylor number 25 in the country. Geno Smith out of the pocket, throws. And a hard tackle thrown down. Nick Johnson brought some pressure and a rare pressure by Baylor. I remember, let's go back one season, guys, to the bowl season. And it was Baylor in the Alamo Bowl that put up crazy points, 67 against Washington. Well, it's just a few days later in the Orange Bowl when West Virginia and Geno Smith put up 70 points against Clemson. So they, these schools used to things like that. By the way, those were bowl records. The 67 was a bowl record, and then the 70 beat that record. The loss of nearly two, second down, call it 12. In traffic, tough throw, tough catch at the 27-yard line. J.D. Woods, there's the eyes shielded by Geno Smith. Petros Baylor needs to get back to pressuring. That's when they had success and got off the field. And it's this situation, force the underneath throw rather than letting Geno Smith sit in the pocket and pick you apart down the field. It's not going to be easy, though, Joe. I mean, they had their opportunities to hit him in the first half, but now he's got so much confidence. And like you talked about earlier, Baylor's defense is tired. Empty backfield, Geno Smith. Bears show some blitz on the corner. Now they pull back. They bring it up the middle. Gino throws. You think that arm's tired? No. That was a tough throw. Near side, J.D. Woods, the reception at the 40-yard line. I, I, I don't like it because Baylor tried to come from depth, meaning that they tried to hold their water and blitz from where they were initially lined up rather than at the line of scrimmage. Well, you're not going to get there. That takes too long. The disguise isn't as Geno Smith is too experienced for that. He knows what you're trying to do. And therefore, the corner was hung out one-on-one -on -one coverage. Oh, he West prides, Virginia. And he prides Burns, himself. Yeah. He prides himself on those reads. He is so good at Bowie, the ball carrier. Two yards, maybe three to the 43-yard line. 12 for Bailey, 13 for Austin, 12 for Woods. He's got two 200-yard receivers and one that's over 100. This is crazy. This is crazy. That, that's why, you know, at, at some point the defense has to say, we're not going to just let you stand back there because you've proven that you can do that. Clock under nine minutes. The field incomplete. There was some pushing, some shoving, and the official kept the flag in his pocket. Austin was looking back saying, how about a flag? Josh Wilson, Joe Williams, double coverage for Baylor. It looked like, watch table, and his arm goes out as well. 
I thought that it was a good no call by the official because there wasn't a clear culprit with the contact down the field. Third down, play clock to four. Geno Smith, hard pressure, doesn't run often, but there's another hook slide. So smart, 45 yard line of Baylor and a first down. I know that they got a first down, but that's what they need to keep doing because they're forcing Geno Smith off of his throwing spot. They say, well, we might give up a big play. Well, you've already given up the big play if you're Baylor. So at this point, you've got nothing to lose by trying to disrupt the timing of West Virginia's offense. Fresh downs at the 47. On the ground, picking his way through traffic is Bowie. They'll get him down to the 41, and let's take you back to Los Angeles, and here's Patrick. A good one in the ACC, Miami, NC State, Wolfpack, third down. That's Mike Glennon, finds some time. Glennon hits Rashard Smith for the touchdown, 37-34. Wolfpack back in it. Glennon, four touchdowns. That'd be something unless you're a quarterback in Morgantown. Patrick, I would agree. Any other day, I would tell you that's a shootout, but no. 63-56 <laughs> right. here in West Virginia. Second down for the Mountaineers. Pro Thompson near side. Knocked down near a first down. This depends on the spot. Looks like they're going to move the chains, and they are at the 37 yard line. Chance Casey came up and made that tackle. He broke down and kind of waited for the wide receiver to come to him. That's what allowed him to ultimately get to the scene of Holgerson's been in today. You know, you don't get the right concepts, get in the right formations, and he's done that against Baylor. Came over from Oklahoma State as offensive coordinator to take the helm here at West Virginia. Probably the best stand against the run for Baylor as Lackey came in to make the hit on Bowie. A third down stop starts with good first down defense getting the opponent behind the chains off schedule. Now Baylor's got that opportunity. This is the time right here to step up force some sort of kick from your opponent whether it's a punt or a field goal. West Virginia 11 of 14 on third down conversions. Right now they're looking at second down. Play action, Geno Smith, good protection. Wants the deep ball up to me. Geno Smith on, on Assassins. Joel again, the fact that Baylor allows Geno Smith the time to find the open man. They only rush three, and the pocket is perfect. And Geno Smith is allowed all day to find Bailey, who actually does a great job of tricking the defender, the, the defenders into stopping. He slows down, makes them think, oh, the play must be dead behind me. Bang, speeds up, touchdown West Virginia. Extra point. It's good. And West Virginia on homecoming. They hit the 70-point mark against the Baylor Bears. What a day. Geno Smith and one Stedman Bailey on Fox. <laughs> on the ground. Are needed by Art Browse and the Bears. That was a pickup of seven. Again on the ground. First down. They move the chain. C Strunk is second straight carry and a 14 point advantage for West Virginia on a knee sliding the catch is made by Williams Terrence Williams has had a great day and it's been on plays like that the hitch patterns the curl routes on the outside with the soft coverage and Florence has been able to find him. 14 receptions 257 yards for Williams as he strunk on short Lost a yard. Back to the 43. Quick throw. Down low. 
and a completion at the 48-yard line to Terrence Williams. On the play action, Florence, deep ball up top, caught inside the 10-yard line, and Williams having a monster day. He'll take it at the 8-yard line, and Baylor is still in business. 44 yards. They stop the clock to set the chains. 344 to play. First and goal inside the 10 yard line. Florence, one pump, end zone. Ball batted down, incomplete. That stops the clock on the incompletion with 315 to play. He's got the call and the ball and the throw. Contact, incomplete. The ball hit Norwood about the same time called Joseph laid the wood on him. Third down and goal. Up top, they want to jump it. Got it. Indication, yes, Terrence Williams. Touchdown, Baylor. Who else? That's the second time they've gone to that corner. Jump ball. Great job to put the foot down. And Terrence Williams keeps Baylor in this football game. 3.08 to play. Now Aaron Jones will try to cut it to seven. Kicks up and good. Now one reason why Baylor may have decided to kick away Art Bryles, they've got three timeouts. They get a stop here. They can stop the clock and hopefully get the ball back. And they get a big stop on first down. In fact, a loss of one as the middle backer, Bryce Hager, came just right up the gut and put Bowie on his backside. And a timeout burned. Second down. Geno Smith play action. Good again, protection throw. Oh, what a one-handed grab. J.D. Woods. J.D. Woods. Out of bounds, 38-yard line. I want Joey and Eddie to look at this play as a potential catch of the day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. One hit. He never even put the second hand on it. Not only did he catch it, he doesn't balance it with the other hand. He just tucks it right in to the right side and goes and gets the conversion. Unbelievable. The most inaccurate pass that Gino has thrown all day gets bailed out by J.D. Woods. First and 10, West Virginia. 228 to play. They hand it off to Bowie. He's stacked up, maybe a yard to the 39. Second down and nine. Gino rolls, throws to the flat. Austin, first down, 49-yard line. And stayed in bounds. How about that? Dustin Garrison in the backfield with Gino Smith. He'll get the carry. Big hole up the middle. Watch out. Stiff arms and is tossed out of bounds at the 37-yard line. And Joe Clatt, that may just that just may cap a wild day in Morgantown. Nice seal. That was 76, Pat Egger. And West Virginia wins their debut in the Big 12. Final seconds ticking away. It's been an interesting week in Morgantown. Homecoming celebrations. The anticipation of the Big 12. And it starts off with a bang. 70 to 63.